Hello hikers and nature lovers. My name is David and on the hiking trails I am known as Blue Jacket. I would like to present a new channel here on YouTube, Hiking with Blue Jacket. In the next coming videos, I will take you on the journeys in the wilderness, make you fall in love with outdoor living, and rediscover together the deepest roots of our ancestors. Are you ready? Let's get started then. Before we hit the first hike out there, I would like to mention some equipment that could be very useful on any backpacking trip. One of the common difficulties hikers suffer from on the trails are blisters. It doesn't really matter what kind of shoes you're wearing. If you're backpacking for a longer distance, there is a good chance eventually you will develop blisters. I suffered from blisters a few times and it wasn't pleasant. Protecting feet is crucial and this one product I am using to keep blisters at bay is cell stick adhesive padding. It comes in the pack of three, you can cut them to the size you need and it can be purchased in any pharmacy store or even in local market for about $3.99. Don't use them directly on skin, you should put gas first. I'm using either this one or this adhesive one. Both can be purchased in any dollar store to stay within your budget. Other thing is hand sanitizer. Hikers, especially on long backpacking trips, are touching all kinds of things during the day, using number one or number two and then having a meal. The sanitizer keeps you safe from a potential cross-contamination, getting diarrhea or even salmonella. It weighs only two ounces. You will not even know it's in your backpack, so just use it. Other thing to talk about is food. My friends often asking me what kind of food am I eating on the trails. So I will present some products to give you a better idea what can be used. There is a handful of companies that makes dry food directly for hikers, like this one. Those packages usually weigh about 4 ounces and all you have to do is add hot water, mix it, wait a few minutes and start eating. Some of them could be a little pricey though, they usually start at $10 and up and you can purchase them either in hiker stores or order online, which should be a bit cheaper. But even the regular grocery stores provides wide variety of options. Let's see what we have here. I like those instant noodles, several flavors, just add hot water and eat. Pita bread is great, it lasts long. Same those flour tortillas can be used for burrito. Beef jerky is great for snacking during the day. Tuna can be used either for burrito or just simply add it to the soup. I always carry uh, several of those either sardines or herring fillets. They weigh less than 4 ounces and they are full of protein and omega-3 you need. Rice bags or pasta usually takes around 8 minutes to cook and it's a great source of carbohydrates that should give you that energy boost you need and if you like to add some flavor to your rice just use the soy sauce pack. For a sweet tooth, I adore those granola bars. All kinds of flavors. I usually wolf down two for breakfast and I'm ready to go on the trail. Another great source of energy is trail mix. Again, all kinds of flavors, whatever you like. Handful of those really keep me going. It's always great to have a hot tea or coffee bags and if you like to add some flavor to your drinking water this drink mix again all kinds of flavors or green superfood should do the job next topic is outfit i made a huge mistake last year while hiking on the appalachian trail 
to bring wool and cotton clothing. It was heavy, took too much space in my backpack, and when this gets wet, it takes forever to dry. I learned from my mistakes and therefore I would recommend polyester or another synthetic fabric. Those materials are very light, easy to pack, keeps you equally warm and comfortable like wool, and it dries fast. Depend on what time of the year you hike, you're gonna need short sleeve, long sleeve, or no sleeve that is great for hot summer months. Warm halsey pullover for a cold nights. Good windbreaker or parka with hoodie for rainy and windy days. If you hike in the winter time, don't forget gloves. Best would be thermal waterproof ones, because fingertips are usually the first part of the body that gets cold in the freezing weather. The last to discuss is core equipment of every backpacking. Let's start with the backpack. You should choose its size depend on your body weight and body height. I'm 6'2 and 205 pounds and my backpack is 65 liters. That's more than enough space to carry all my supplies and I still have some spare room just in case. The common question is how much the bag should weigh? The usual answer would be about 15 to 20 percent of your body weight. The general recommendation would be if your backpack weighs more than 40 pounds then something is wrong. You're either carrying too much stuff you don't need or you're carrying wrong stuff that weighs too much. My backpack with full winter gear, water and food supplies for about 5 days weighs about 30 pounds, give or take. Backpacking tent for one person, this one weighs 3.6 pounds and fits me nicely. Sleeping pad. I use this foam one, easy to spread and fold and it weighs less than a pound. It doesn't give you same level of comfort as the air mattress would, which is the second option. In nowadays they make a mattress with self-inflating pump built in that saves you some breath, but naturally it's more expensive and there is always that possibility of air leak. It takes only one hidden nail or a splinter if you're staying in the shelter or a sharp rock underneath the tent to pierce a hole. I heard quite a few stories from hikers on the trail about it and of course by the Murphy's law this always happens when you are 50 miles away from a nearest supply store. Sleeping bag. Mine is made out of polyester, super light, weighs less than 1.5 pound and is good for 30 degrees. If I sleep in colder weather I use this liner. Simply insert inside a sleeping bag and it increased the limit temperature about 10 degrees, so with this I am good for 20 degrees weather. There are sleeping bags on the market designed for super low temperatures like 10 degrees or even zero, but naturally they are 2 or 3 pounds heavier and takes more space in your bag. And the truth is, you don't really need those in the middle of summer, but you're still carrying that extra weight. That's why I like this liner I use only in low temperatures and the rest of the year I carry just my super light sleeping bag. The last thing is water filter. I always carry a little over 2 liters of water with me in 2 bottles on the trail. And when I run out, I simply refill from a local sources like creek or spring. You fill up this bag with water. Apply the filter, turn upside down, squeeze, and there it is. Delicious, refreshing water that tastes a thousand times better than the one in your home faucet. This is the basic equipment. There is of course more to it, like flashlight, cookware, etc. We're gonna talk about it in some next videos. 
The last thing to discuss is how much should you spend for your gear. It really depends on what's your budget, but you should not waste money on stuff you truly don't need. I buy my equipment several ways, some in special hiking stores, other online and some simply in discount stores. The total price for all this equipment you see here was about $270, which I think is very fair amount. That's all I wanted to talk about. I believe now we are ready to hit that first hike. Let's get started. Happy trails. Thank <sweak> you.